seven. Can I check in if I wasn't here? Please vote when it comes up to the screen. The minutes pass unanimously. At, um, I'm going to open the public meeting at uh, 7.02. First item on the meeting this evening is the Parker Point filing number one, minor development plat. Paul? Good evening, Acting Chair and members of Planning Commission. <coughs> It's nice to see you in that seat, Commissioner Howe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, as was just mentioned, the first public hearing this evening is project number SUB 19-052. The request is for the Parker Point Minor Development Plat Filing Number 1. Uh, please note that the applicant has provided the notification affidavits indicating that the hearing this evening has been legally noticed. <clears throat> Subject property for this request is located at the southeast corner of Parker Road and Stroh Road. To the north is um, a mixture of developed and undeveloped commercial lots. To the northwest is um, developed uh, commercial parcels uh, across Parker and Stroh. And to the west are um, additional commercial lots that have been, uh, for the most part, developed. The subject property this evening was annexed and zone modified commercial in August of 2018. The site totals about 14 acres in size. And the applicant has submitted this minor development plat application in order to create 15 lots for commercial development and two tracks to be dedicated to the town as they are encumbered by the floodplain and the Preble's jumping mouse habitat. For context, the request for a minor development plat is a type of subdivision application. During the review of this application, uh, items such as the lot size and layout are reviewed to make sure that town standards have been met. Uh, shared improvements for the development uh, meet the town standards. The action this evening by Planning Commission uh, will need to be based on six approval criteria that will be listed shortly in the presentation. Uh, and at this time, individual site development is not evaluated with this minor development plat. If approved, specific site plans would be submitted and specific uh, requirements uh, would be reviewed for site plan at that time. Whoops. The Planning Commission did hear this identical application in February of 2019, and it was subsequently approved by Town Council in March of 2019. The applicant was unable to meet the financial obligations of the Subdivision Improvement Agreement, and therefore the Mylars and the SIA were never recorded, and the approval expired. The applicant now has their funding in place, and is re requesting reapproval of this application in order to begin development of the subject property. There we go. Um, the town's master plan calls out this intersection as a community center. The community center is intended for a large market area that serves multiple neighborhoods. Um, uses that are identified as compatible with this designation are retail and personal services, business services, office, recreation, restaurants, uh, and the creation of the commercial lots um, is consistent with the master plan designation. As referenced before, the site was annexed and zoned. Um, the specific zoning on this, sub, on this property is a modified commercial, uh, so it does allow for those commercial uses uh, that were identified within the, uh, the master plan. And this image shows the minor development plat as proposed. Again, it's identical to uh, what was seen uh, last year by Planning Commission. The 15 lots are indicated by the red boxes. The two tracks that would be dedicated to the town are the two uh, green boxes on the right-hand side of the image here. 
The two blue circles show the um, access uh, from Stroh Road and from Parker Road. The, the blue circles indicate right in, right out access, and the location of the yellow star is the general location where the site would have full movement access onto Stroh Road. As part of the development of this site, uh, the developer is required to make improvements to both Parker Road and Stroh Road, uh, contribute financially to Kinney Creek, Kinney Creek Trail improvements, uh, contribute to a tree mitigation. Uh, they have some financial obligations for a sanitary sewer easement. They're required to get an access permit from CDOT uh, prior to their grading permit. Uh, they are also required to get approval from Douglas County for some off-site drainage pond uh, improvements. Uh, approval from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for work in the riparian zone. Uh, the, that's the Preble's uh, jumping mouse habitat. Uh, and then they're required to un overhead, excuse me, underground the overhead power lines uh, and then make the access improvements uh, to the east of their property to, to implement that full movement access. These are the uh, approval criteria for minor development plat that were referenced just a bit ago in the presentation. Um, essentially that the proposal is consistent with the master plan and general land use plan. It complies with the town's land development ordinance and the other standards of the town. Uh, it complies with the applicable zone district standards. The public notice requirements have been met. A subdivision agreement has been executed and public dedications have been satisfied. Um, consistent with the first round of review and recommendations to planning commission, uh, town staff along with our referral partners did review for compliance with these standards and, and has determined that, that the application does comply. With that, all other referral agencies have responded with either advisory comments or no comments related to this request. And staff is recommending that Planning Commission recommend that Town Council approve the request for a minor development plat at the southeast corner of Parker Road and Stroh Road. That would conclude staff's presentation. However, staff's available for questions. And additionally, the applicant is available for any questions. Thank you, Paul. Any commissioner questions for Paul? Were any of the comments that were received um, different from the first round in no, a substantial way? No, ma'am. Okay. And there are no major changes from the first time we, when we heard this in uh, last year? No, sir. Okay. Are there any questions for the applicant? Because I assume he does not want to make a presentation again today, Paul. They are here. They're prepared to answer questions, but uh, no presentation. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? No. No. Hearing none, um, I will open this at uh, this time for uh, commissioner discussion, or open it to, I'm sorry, for public comment first. Anyone who wishes to comment on this, please step forward to the dais. Podium. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm a little tired tonight. Yeah, it's okay. Yes, I do have a question if you don't mind. Can you come, to you come forward to the uh, podium, please? Okay. State your name and address. For the applicants, I have a question. I'm sorry, I, I didn't sign up for this. Uh, <clears throat> Please state your name and address for the record. Um, Michelle Heinerman, uh, 5318 South Telluride Way in Centennial, Colorado. So I have a question for the applicants. You have prairie dogs on this property. Um, have you given any thought to humane relocation, uh, passive relocation, wildlife? Oh, we're going to be bringing oh, that sorry. whole subject up shortly. Oh, I, oh, no, I meant for this plat, this plat right here. I uh, thought that it will I, all I, be I, I am hard at hearing today. I apologize, right, this sir. This plat will be covered under all of the things we're going to oh, talk oh, okay. about shortly. Then let me sit back down. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> at this time, at uh, 710, I'll close the uh, oh, public. Oh, oh, you got another one? All right. I didn't well, see. I don't know. Maybe it might be the same thing. But um, last year, I didn't know this was occurring tonight, but last year, um, the Please state your name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. It's record. Amanda Seinhauser, 9157 Bayou Gulch Road. Parker. Thank you. Um, there were some red-tailed nesting hawks um, that were in those trees, and you had mentioned tree mitigation. I just wondered if um, they were going to wait until after, because I'm sure they nest there every year, if that's an issue now, um, like it was last year. Paul, do you have any so, idea on that? So it was Normally, the um, audience would, would, we would do the, um, the public, uh, 
comment period. And at the close of public comment period, if there's questions for staff or the applicant to address, we would address them all at once okay. as opposed to one by one. Uh, so for consistency, I would recommend that we um, close the public comment or give those that have additional questions or comments the opportunity to speak and then we can answer them all I'll at once. Down. Are there any additional public comments on this point? <clears throat> Hearing none, I will close the public comment. Um, commissioners have any further requests for information from staff or the applicant? Um, I would ask if Paul could address that one question regarding the raptors on the property. Sure. So um, staff will answer the, the two issues sort of broadly and holistically and then specifically we'll we'll ask the applicant to address that um, so the the prairie dog question the applicant is is required to comply with all local state and federal requirements uh, for the prairie dog mitigation um, the the details for that the applicant will need to address um, the staff is aware of the hawk that's the the nest that's on the property um, and there has been close coordination with uh, Colorado Department of Wildlife related to that um, there are certain times of year where if it is determined that the hawk is nesting there then construction activity either has to mitigate or or not occur depending on a variety of factors and the applicant um, has been working with the Colorado Department of Wildlife on making sure that they are consistent and compliant with those requirements thank you Uh, good evening, Jerry Davidson with Perception Design Group. Um, address is 6901 South Pierce Street, Suite 315 in Littleton, Colorado. Um, regarding the prairie dogs, you know, we are aware that they're there and we will comply with applicable state and federal regulations to humanely take care of that. We're also working closely with environmental consultant and the Division of Wildlife concerning the hawk. We are aware that it has been in there in the past and we are aware also that if it does nest, um, prior to our beginning construction, it will affect the construction schedule and it will have to stop until the, the nesting time is completed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Nope. This time I'll close the public hearing at 713. Planning Commissioner discussion. <clears throat> well, when I saw this come through, it was, I recognized it. Um, and I approved it the last time. I'm inclined to approve it this time as well for the same reasons I did last time. Yeah, I think the applicant's request uh, meets the town's uh, master plan criteria and town standards, and I'm good with going forward with the next step in the development process. I agree with my fellow commissioners. I also agree with my fellow commissioners. I agree that if we follow by CPW and any U.S. Fish and Wildlife, um, it's been agreed upon before that I don't have any issues with it. Mm -hmm. I agree with my uh, fellow commissioners and will um, ask for a motion if there's no further discussion. I move Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the Parker Point filing number one minor development plan subject. I'll second. It's been moved by Eliana and seconded by Rich to approve the Parker Point filing number one minor development plat. All those in favor, please vote yes when the thing comes up. Motion passes unanimously. The second item on the agenda for this evening is a draft ordinance, a bill for an ordinance to amend Title 13 of the Parker Municipal Court by the addition there O2 of a new section 13.10.250 entitled Prairie Dog Management. Uh, Bryce, are you gonna do that or John? John. John? Chairman, I'll, I'll, I will give a presentation. All right, thank you. I know the feeling. Okay, thank you, Chairman. There's the first element of rust. Turn on the microphone. 
So thank you, Chairman Howe and commissioners of the Parker Planning Commission. Uh, I'm here tonight to present on a uh, proposed draft ordinance, draft ordinance 3.353, which would create a new section of the Parker Municipal Code to be found at uh, Title 13.10.250 regarding prairie dog management. And the background with respect to this proposed ordinance is summarized on this slide. Um, as you know, uh, the town has experienced substantial growth over the past 10 years. Frankly, the town has experienced substantial growth since its incorporation in 1981. Um, so lots of growth. We, were, um, we have been a growth community and continue to be, although we are uh, maturing as a community and suburbanizing. Um, it is clear uh, the council believes, the town believes that that growth may impact wildlife and wildlife habitat uh, by virtue of the development uh, and the site construction activity related to it. This impact or potential impact is of concern to the town, including the council and staff, as well as Parker residents and residents of unincorporated Douglas County, um, whom we've heard from over the years in this setting and in town council public meetings in connection with various applications for development. By way of recent example, um, the proposed and now under construction Dominium Development South Range Crossings housing project on J. Morgan Boulevard in Stroh Ranch was heard by this commission um, and approved. And um, there was an existing prairie dog colony uh, on that property. Uh, which became of concern to the neighborhood and the neighbors. Um, and a coalition of residents and groups worked with that developer um, to relocate um, a substantial number of those existing prairie dogs in that colony to another location, uh, which I think I would count as a success. Um, but it was not a success that was required or driven by the town code. Fr frankly, there's nothing in the town code whether it's Title 13, which is what you work in and what we work in, governing development, or anywhere else that establishes a policy or standards uh, for how to address wildlife impacts from development and construction, including and especially prairie dogs. So this issue has um, uh, certainly been on the radar screen, so to speak. And last year, 2019, Town Council directed community development staff to dig into this issue and research options for mitigating impacts of growth on wildlife in general, related wildlife habitat, including prairie dogs. And so we've been working on that effort um, since the council asked us to do that work uh, and have done research, come up with concepts and alternatives, which we've discussed with council on multiple occasions dating back to 2019, most recently February 10th of this year. The council um, at that February 10th town study session um, gave staff direction after presentation and further discussion to prepare an ordinance that would establish in municipal code for the first time a policy and some standards um, for how to manage prairie dogs that are impacted by development um, and applications for development. So that's why we're here. Lots of text, usually a no-no in a PowerPoint presentation, but it's an ordinance. Um, pictures didn't seem appropriate. Um, you can see the, the intent of this ordinance um, as it's constructed is to promote humane management of prairie dogs in connection with applications for development and actual development and site construction activity. The code, uh, the ordinance expresses a preference for relocation of prairie dogs if feasible, and if relocation is infeasible, that they be exterminated in the most humane method um, possible uh, given current, current methods and practices. The applicability of this ordinance is that it would apply to most development applications that the town receives, processes, and decides. Um, a couple minor exceptions, for example, an application for rezoning. An application for rezoning would not trigger this ordinance. Uh, a rezoning application is not um, a development proposal. It's usually either a legislative action by the town via the town council, or it's um, a proposal by a property owner as to use. 
um, the actual applications that go to um, the, the obtaining of development approvals and entitlements are down the road. Things like a site plan application, a minor development plat application, a sketch and preliminary plat application, a grading per application and permit, a demolition permit, all of those kinds of applications and permits um, are in, in this ordinance as proposed and would trigger these requirements. As to relocation, um, not only is there a stated preference for relocation if feasible, uh, there's language in the draft ordinance that applicants are encouraged to work with and partner with local nonprofit conservation and public in interest groups to relocate existing prairie dogs that would be um, affected by site development to areas and locations where they can um, reside and reestablish their colony and, and hopefully have a happy, healthy life. As to humane extermination, um, if relocation is found or proven to be infeasible um, by the applicant and the town agrees, um, then there are standards and provisions for um, how that extermination is to be accomplished on, a, on an approved development site. The products um, used in that activity must be approved by the Colorado Department of Agriculture, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the U.S. <coughs> Environmental Protection Agency. No extermination is allowed if designated state or federally designated endangered and threatened species are present on the site or the property until those designated threatened or endangered species are protected, typically done through relocation. Um, with this activity, um, there's a standard for the first time that products used must be non-toxic. Um, a lot of debate in the literature and in the community about what that means, right, because the products are intended to have a certain effect on the wildlife. Um, but that would be things like the use of carbon monoxide and dioxide, as opposed to some of the more toxic and hazardous um, and perhaps inhumane poisons uh, that the industry uses. Number two, um, the products would uh, have to be used in such a way, and the type of products used would have to um, eliminate secondary poisoning of other wildlife and species, so they have to be targeted. And then thirdly, uh, the products used for this activity uh, must eliminate impacts to non-target species, uh, which kind of goes related to the, non to the secondary poisoning. So the product, if it's intended to affect prairie dogs and cause their, cause their elimination, uh, their death, um, should not also cause death and harm to other species that are on or near the property. Um, as, and that's kind of a new standard and a goal. Uh, with regard to how this gets accomplished by code, kind of the regulation, how does the town know that this is happening? There's also a requirement as part of this new and first time ordinance um, that ap all applicants that are subject to the ordinance must provide a, certif a legal certification, which is binding upon them and is reviewed and approved by the town. Um, this certification would be a standard condition of approval um, with applications for development if and when they're approved. And it would require the applicant to provide a legal certification to the town in a form acceptable to the town. That means we'll probably issue that form for, for applicants to complete. Uh, certifying and guaranteeing that they've complied with the provisions of the ordinance as to how it's applied on their property and with their project. And that would, that would be binding. Staff analysis and recommendations. Um, this draft ordinance uh, regarding prairie dog management begins for the first time uh, in town code since incorporation in 1981 to address the town, public, and resident concerns about the impact of growth upon wildlife, in this particular instance, upon prairie dogs and prairie dog colonies found on approved development sites. It creates a policy and standards for the first time uh, about prairie dog management where none currently exist. So even when the town, the town council, and the staff wish to um, require an applicant or uh, encourage an applicant uh, to work with the community and interest groups for prairie dog preservation and relocation. We have no code standards. We have no code requirements or tools to accomplish that. 
It simply gets done through the good graces of the applicant with the community. Now, I think that the, the Dominium development project is at least a partial example of a success, but it wasn't driven by code or policy. This would attempt to do that for the first time. Staff finds that this draft ordinance is consistent with the Parker 2035 master plan in multiple sections, particularly in the uh, chapter uh, regarding natural resources. Uh, that staff therefore recommends um, approval of this draft ordinance, and we recommend that Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve this ordinance at public hearing in the upcoming weeks, and you have in front of you on the final slide the recommended form of motion if you agree with the staff recommendation. I'm happy to take comments or questions. Thank you, John. Any questions for uh, John? Uh, uh, John, when will this become effective? This would be, Bryce, help me out. Do you recall when this is scheduled for public hearing? I think April 6th, perhaps, if so, I recall. So April 6th, so 10 days after. Right. So this ordinance is scheduled for town council public hearing at their April 6th meeting, so as Bryce indicated. If council approves it, it's effective 10 days after that action, so by, by mid-April. Our previous applicants grandfathered in or just new? This is, there's no grandfathering. Uh, this is, this would be uh, effective and binding upon applicants who obtain their town land use approval and entitlement after the effective date. So hypothetically, let's say it's effective April 17th. Um, it, would be effect, it would be binding upon applicants who receive their approvals on April 17th and thereafter, but it, it cannot be under the law retroactive prior to that. Thank you. Um, if someone had approval for their plat but had not yet uh, uh, gotten approval for grading, they, this would then apply for their grading permit, even though they had prior approval on the development steps prior to so grading. So it, it would be, depending on the kind of approval or permit being sought in this case, it, it is hypothetically possible and, and fairly typical for an applicant to, let's say, receive a sketch and preliminary plan approval and uh, at one point and then come back months or even a year or longer later right. for a grading permit, this would have effect upon that. Okay, good, thank you. Um, I have a question about um, wh who approves um, if relocation is not feasible? And could you give me an example of what would not be um, a reason for a relocation? So I think the... Uh, among the, there are multiple ways that that could be infeasible. It's a good question. The applicant would have, to, the way this would work um, is that the applicant would either comply and say we've relocated and demonstrate that and certify to that, or they would say relocation is infeasible and they would have to provide information about why it's infeasible for town review. We would have to review and essentially agree with that determination. Um, one of the most common reasons uh, that relocation is infeasible is that there's a lack of a, re of a proper receiving zone for, 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 for the prairie dogs, either a partial colony or a whole colony, to be relocated. If there's no receiving ground, if a, pro if a public entity if can't be found that's willing to accept the prairie dogs in relocation, or a private property owner can't be found that's willing to accept the prairie dogs in relocation, <coughs> That would be a fairly typical um, outcome, not not all the time, but a, a somewhat typical outcome that would go to infeasibility. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, can you give me a timing on for both the prairie dogs and the developers? Um, is there a set? You know, if if the developers go through X and they can't find a relocation, what is the timing looking like for that? And if the developers don't go through X, what does the timing look for like for the prairie dogs? So Commissioner Rodell, I guess I, if you would just, if you can clarify for me so I can give my So everybody needs to plan, answer. right? Yes. And in both the, you know, the developers specifically in this case, I guess the prairie dogs don't have too much of a timing tool. However, what, are, what covers the requirements by the developers to make sure that they've abided by there's no kind of timing limitations. Can this drag on for a year, two years, 
or does the town finally say you've done, you have tried everything in your power to get these prairie dogs relocated, um, and who, and so who makes the final determination of the relocation or the termination, which I'm assuming is the town, but do we have a time frame that developers need to, or that I guess that developers don't have to go past if they've abided by all the requ so, uh, all the requirements. Uh, thank you. That okay. that helps me. Okay. Um, uh, good question. I can tell you. So the the ordinance deliberately does not specify a time frame or a duration, either a minimum time frame for let's say this due diligence or a period of compliance or attempted compliance to happen, or a maximum time frame after which a developer is released from the from the obligation. Uh, we deliberately, it was an issue that we considered. Mm -hmm. And as we prepared alternative concepts for review and discussion with the town council, we had some concepts that were um, more streamlined and had even fewer standards and requirements than this draft ordinance does. And we had several options that we found and that we prepared for discussion uh, in a Parker context that were much more regulatory and much more extensive than the, than the draft ordinance you have in front of you. So we kind of ended up somewhere in the middle, probably a little bit less than middle uh, with regard to, to this draft ordinance in terms of uh, the regulations and requirements. Um, we did consider time frames and durations. That's typically what we do a lot, as I think this commission knows in code and process. Um, but we decided not to do that. And council, because this is so new, and this is the town's first effort at this, wanted to try and strike a balance between encouraging relocation and preservation, and where necessary, if extermination is necessary, promoting the use of humane means and methods. Um, and kind of striking that balance in terms of a policy and some standards without being so prescriptive and so regulatory that this became unduly burdensome to uh, all parties in the process, including staff. So we decided not to put that in, in the final version of the ordinance. Council agreed, based, and that was based on discussion. It was not just staff fiat. It was multiple discussions uh, uh, with council direction. So I have to tell you, Commissioner Rodell, we do not, I can't sit here tonight and tell you in terms of as if this is approved and as we begin, as applicants are subject to it and as staff begins to administer this new policy and, and the new standards, how that kind of implementation will work in the time frames that will go through it. I think we are going to be looking for good faith efforts to use a term that applicants are adhering to and attempting to meet the standard, the, the spirit and the letter of the ordinance. Some applicants will take, a sh will, that'll, we think it'll take a couple months. I think it will take at least several months to, to go through that. We didn't specify the duration. Um, some applicants will be, will take this more seriously and will probably make more of a good faith effort to adhere to the policy and the standards. Others may not. I think it's, we'll have to see how that works out. And I could envision once we kind of go down this road a little bit, there may be a need or a desire to come back and further tweak this ordinance once we put it into practice, including perhaps some clarification on that issue. But since this is new and uncharted ground for the town and for a lot of communities down here in Douglas County, we want to strike a balance between uh, <clears throat> proposing new policy and standards and not having it be um, a massive new regulatory initiative that would be difficult for applicants to comply with and the town and staff to administer properly to affect the outcome. Bit of an experiment. So on a follow-up to that real quick, I'm assuming that prior to extermination, um, consultation with CPW will be taken in, uh, you know, for any additional species in the area, i.e. burrowing owls. And if it needs to be elevated to U.S. Fish and Wildlife, that will all be considered. But once, once those requirements are met, and we know the ground is cleared of, I would say, any um, hurdles, you can move forward with it. Yeah, it, again, the provision on it, it is state or federally designated threatened or endangered species. Okay. 
So there will be that kind of review and referral process. We will at the staff level, after the council acts on at public hearing on the proposed ordinance, if they do adopt the ordinance, the community development department will have to do some kind of administrative provisions for implementation. Probably there'll be the certification form. We will work with the town attorney's office on creating a standard form of certification for applicants. We will likely have to do some kind of check administrative checklist, which we we have all kinds of checklists uh, that guide process and tell applicants what they what they have to provide to the town for review. So there'll be probably a checklist that goes with this, which we have to prepare and create. There may be an in, an intake form a tracking form that goes with this all, all online. So we have those administrative implementations, kind of the rulemaking post ordinance adoption, which we'll have to go through as well, which we hope to, to do in such a way that the timing issue that we, that we ensure that applicants take this policy and the standards attached to it seriously so that they neither race through it in a way that looks like they're not, they're just trying to check a box and not trying to meet the spirit and letter of, of the ordinance. And also so that applicants don't take so long that it looks like they're just avoiding it or that they take so long never getting to an end that they're unduly damaged in actually starting and building and constructing their projects, trying to strike that balance. Okay. Uh was wondering where this ordinance sits uh, in relation to our peer communities in Douglas County. This this ordinance, as far as I can tell, based on our research, I believe it would be the, f there are only a handful, what, four, I think four municipalities in the county. I hope I have my, I don't need my fingers <laughs> and toes for that. So we would be the first municipality based on my, our research and my discussion with other community development directors that would have this kind of ordinance that directly attaches to the development <laughs> process and would become a condition of approval attached to development approvals. And does the county itself have any ordinance like this? Not for development applications, but they do have standards, policies, and practices with regard to prairie dog management. But those typically apply, pri those apply primarily to the public lands that the county owns and manages. Okay. And they, okay. as you know, they have large land holdings for mm -hmm. parks, trails, and open space. Yes. Further questions for staff? No. No, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank At you. this time, um, we'll open the discussion for public comment. I uh, have a couple things to address before everybody gets up there. Uh, if you would please state your name and address when you get to the podium for the record. Would you please confine your comments basically to the ordinance and limit your conversations to three minutes and Bryce will be running the timer over there, I believe, so that you can keep in track. And uh, at the end of public comment, any questions that need to be addressed will be addressed by staff. Hello. You're my first. Name, thank you. <laughs> my name is Mark Snyder, Jr., and um, I led the project at Stroh Ranch uh, with the Dominium Project in Parker, uh, the one that was referenced uh, with this specific ordinance, as well as these fine people behind me who helped me every step of the way. Could you state your address also? Oh, sure. Um, it's uh, uh, Ironstone Way in Parker, Colorado. Sorry, I'm nervous. I, I teach speech, so I shouldn't be nervous, but um, I'd like to say that I... Um, I commend Parker Town Council for um, following through with an ordinance to protect prairie dogs. Um, as you all know, they're a keystone native species um, and they're important to the ecosystem here in Colorado. Uh, without a prairie dog, we wouldn't have a prairie. Uh, we also wouldn't have um, hundreds of insects, plants, and other animals. So they truly are a keystone native species. And currently uh, with development, developers are free to do what they will with prairie dogs. They can bury them with their, um, with their construction vehicles, with bulldozers. They can poison them with uh, fumatoxin, which is a highly noxious chemical that uh, was just used yesterday at Pine Lane and Parker Road. Uh, there were two, two or three prairie dog carcasses above ground yesterday, and um, those carcasses can be eaten by coyotes or birds of prey that would cause a secondary poisoning as well. Um, so this ordinance addresses not only the humane relocation of prairie dogs, but when that is not found to be feasible, it also um, asks that uh, developers humanely exterminate them, 
which is very important um, because right now uh, fumatoxin is a, as I mentioned, a noxious chemical that um, is a very painful death for prey dogs over the course of two or three days. They kind of melt from the inside out. Um, it's the cheapest way, so that is why it is used most commonly. And if Parker becomes a model for Douglas County, I think that would be a wonderful thing. And um, prairie dogs are not just a rodent that carries the plague. In fact, they don't carry the plague. They die within three to four days of contracting the plague. It is the fleas that carry the plague. And um, we need to stop stigmatizing the prairie dog because they are um, an essential part of our ecosystem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I'm nervous as well. Uh, my name is Linda Wilson. My address is 11443 East Regency Court, Parker. Uh, Lafayette, Longmont, Boulder, Thornton, Broomfield, RTD, and CDOT all currently have prairie dog ordinances in place, like this one being proposed tonight. These ordinances help both the developer, the towns, and wildlife advocates in trying to find a fair and humane solution for the prairie dog. Our wildlife and open space is what attracted many people to this area, and as such, Parker has experienced years of rapid growth. We need protection now for our native wildlife before it is too late. We need to maintain and protect Parker's natural ecosystem before it is all erased. Please support this ordinance for our wildlife <clears throat> and our native keystone species of prairie dog. That was written two days ago. As an added footnote, I would like to add, we have been working off and on for over two years with a developer who has said consistently that they were in favor of relocating the 15 acres of prairie dogs on their land if land became available to us, that they might even entertain the thought of contributing money to do so. We contacted them again last fall, being polite and respectful to ask the time frame for their project. Once again, they responded they were open for relocation. A few weeks later, an exterminator was hired to poison all 15 acres. We once again, last week, politely told them there were seven survivors out of hundreds. Did we have permission to live trap those remaining seven if land became available to us? Yesterday, they had those seven poisoned. I was notified and watched for three and a half hours, two of them suffering and dying. A slow death outside their holds. Fumatoxin is no quick death. The two were still alive, dying when I left due to darkness. How humane is that? I also might add that the exterminator last fall posted about four or five signs, 12 inches by 12 inches for 15 acres, saying poison with a picture of a skull and crossbones, danger, do not walk on this land. Four or five small signs for 15 acres that I might add are adjacent to open space, a bike path, and sidewalks. The dying prairie dogs yesterday were five feet from the sidewalk where people walk their dogs on long leashes and kids play in the open space. This developer is on his third or fourth revisions required. There was no need or rush to kill these prairie dogs. Please consider this ordinance. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Jack Coyne. I live at 19288 East Hickok Drive in Parker, that's the Stroh Ranch area. I wanna commend the council, the planning commission, and the gentleman here to my right on a very good effort here on this particular ordinance. Um, but I would like to highlight some things that I think uh, are embedded in the ordinance that might forecast some problems ahead. So my comments are directed to avoiding problems ahead for you and for the staff. And here are my suggestions. It seems obvious to me that what you're trying to accomplish here is to set forth a policy for the town of Parker with respect to development and prairie dogs. It's very clear in what's written here in a page and a half that they keep talking about a policy with respect to having a preference for relocation. Not a requirement, but a preference. And also what's stated here is that the applicant work with community groups in accomplishing the intent of the ordinance that you're looking at right now. And that is 
if relocation is not feasible, then the, the prairie dogs are going to have to be exterminated and some guidelines are given here as to what humane extermination is. This is all well and good and uh, uh, again it's obvious that the staff has taken some time and looked at this problem. But here's what I see as uh, sort of a third party. I've not been until this point really involved in any drafting. Uh, but, but what I see is what needs to be clarified here in terms of the policy is are there any requirements set out here for a developer uh, to meet? And the answer is no, I don't see any requirements here. There's only a preference. And the preference is for relocation, but if it's not feasible, then you can exterminate under certain conditions. Well, who makes the determination of what's feasible or not feasible? Well, you have to say under what's written because it's not explicitly stated. It's the developer who makes the, uh, the determination. But are there any guidelines or suggestions? Or is there any language like in good faith? And, and the key points here are not even mentioned. You know, a building permit or a grading permit um, uh, could be issued without having a certification because it, it doesn't reference back any, any other permits other than a demolition permit. So I think by tweaking some language to make a determination and give guidance to the staff as to how to evaluate uh, an applicant's um, statement that it's either feasible or not, the criteria needs to be set forth and um, and the parties really need to act in good faith because that was the success of the Dominion project. The parties worked together in good faith. While there was no requirements, and there are no requirements here, uh, it's not going to be the same uh, in some circumstances going forward. There are going to be conflicts because someone's opinion as to feasibility may be entirely different than what the staff's idea of feasibility means. So I would suggest and recommend that there be another uh, perhaps albeit short drafting session to, to cover some of these uh, apparent uh, vaguenesses uh, that I see in this ordinance. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Jennifer Reddy. I live at 11629 Fenwick Circle in Parker. And first I, I wanna echo what some of the other folks here have said, just thanking everyone for their efforts and their consideration of an ordinance like this. Obviously it's one of the first in Douglas County, which is kind of shocking to me, honestly, that it's one of the first that uh, we have out here, especially with so much great open space and wildlife that we have. Um, I've lived in Parker. My family moved here in 1984 um, when I was five years old. And so I have a very strong connection to the community. And I feel strongly that the whole reason most of us love Colorado and are here is what makes it special. The wildlife, the open spaces, the prairie, the mountains. And I really think it's our duty to balance the development that we all you know, gain from, from an economical and a convenient standpoint with the, you know, wildlife and the, um, the West, the flavor of the West that we all enjoy. And I think I'd echo again what some of the other folks have said that I think this is a good start. I think it is a really good experiment that I, I hope everyone would put most effort into making a success. And I would hope it would just be a starting point that we could then go further to try to protect some of the species, you know, prairie dogs, as well as other types of wildlife, um, you know, from some of these awful practices, you know, poisons, toxins, obviously all of us kind of think that that's not a great way to manage these things. You know, it, one bad decision by a developer can lead to so many harms to our community from, you know, poisoned dogs and threatened wildlife and groundwater issues and liability issues. It just seems like it's in the community best interest to take the right steps to prevent that as much as possible. And I really encourage um, as much, you know, kind of effort behind this ordinance as possible and, you know, encourage you to kind of hear the public out on this. So thank you very much for your consideration.
Hi, I'm Alex Austin. I live at 11614 Club Drive, and I'll try and keep this, sheep, uh, this short because I don't really have anything too prepared. But um, I'd like to, to just say yeah, I, I appreciate that this is moving forward at all, and I, I'd urge you to move forward with this ordinance. And um, I, I, I do agree with many of the you know um, improvements suggested um, by some of the other community members. And however, I think where we are right now with absolutely no ordinance on the books at all is allowing for a lot of horrible things that, that my other community members have pointed out. And I think that's unacceptable. So I, I'd like to start from something which is really great and maybe over time improve it and just move forward on, on what was presented tonight. And thank you for your time. Good evening. Um, my name is Siobhan Cox. The first name is S-I-O-B-H-A-N. And I live at 42943 Vista Ridge Road in Parker. Um, I'd also like to voice appreciation for the efforts that have been put into this ordinance. Um, I do believe strongly that it is of critical importance to protect wildlife and prairie dogs specifically. Um, as the Humane Society of the United States has said, they are of unparalleled ecological importance in the Great Plains ecosystem. Yesterday, as Linda mentioned, fumatoxin was used at the Parker Auto Plaza site. Um, and I, although I was not there, I've seen video that she took. And it was truly heartbreaking and truly made me sick to my stomach. And it was so close to the paths, so close to the sidewalks, that somebody walking their dog, somebody, somebody's child runs off on them, some teenagers who we know do whatever they want to do could have gone in there and gotten in touch and contact with that fumatoxin. It's very dangerous, and I commend you on trying to get this path to stop the use of fumatoxin in our community. Um, I would also like to recommend um, that in subsection C, the relocation subsection, that you specifically say that applicants are required to make a good faith effort to relocate existing prairie dogs. I know you mentioned that in, what you're, in your comments, but I know it's not specifically, at least in the draft that I saw. And because I have found that People often tell us what we want to hear, as opposed to what's really true or what their true intentions are. I encourage you and the staff to put these certifications that developers give you through rigorous review. Um, I just I wouldn't want them to pay lip service to the requirements or simply tell you what you want to hear. Um, Overall, I do support your efforts. I do think it could be made stronger, but I do really very much appreciate your going um, down this road and attempting to put into place a first um, effort at um, prairie dog relocation, encouragement, and requirements of good faith efforts, and to reduce the use of dangerous chemicals in our community. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Peter Erickson, 927 East Pioneer Drive here in Parker, Colorado. Um, I would encourage you guys to consider um, moving this forward and strengthening it down the road as well. Um, I, was, I moved here to Parker when I was four years old back in 1988, and uh, no, back in 19, yeah, 1988, and uh, it was a different town back then. And, uh, and part of uh, what has, has uh, driven my, my love for nature in my life and my love for animals and my work in conservation, part of what sparked that is growing up and seeing all the wildlife and the nature here in my hometown. And uh, I've done a lot of work with the National Audubon Society and different conservation groups and animal rehab groups. 
And one of the things, we, we do have uh, uh, nesting bald eagles in Parker, which is awesome that we still have that here. And um, the ones in Parker, at least, you know, bald eagles eat a lot of fish when they're close to water, but the ones in Parker and other prairie areas depend mostly on prairie dogs. And, uh, and I've seen firsthand in doing uh, wild bird rehab, the results of what happens when you have uh, the secondary poisoning that folks are talking about. It's really, really awful. Um, you know our our beautiful red-tailed hawks and the and the bald eagles. You know they're they're they'll hunt live animals, but they're also scavengers. They'll take advantage of any opportunity. And when they get a hold of one of these poisoned animals, it's really really tragic. It works its way down the down the entire food chain. So um, so that is uh, that's a tragedy to see that happening to other wildlife. You know there's plenty of cases of neighborhood dogs getting hold of these things and. Uh, they say that they close up the, the prairie dog holes when they poison them, but in their suffering, they try to claw their way out. Many of them end up on the surface like they're, they're talking about, and it's, it's really an awful thing. Um, aside from the fact that uh, prairie dogs are just really, really awesome animals. You know, if you go out and, and look at the colonies after a snowstorm when we've had a, a light snow, you can see uh, tracks going back and forth between every single burrow, and it demonstrates what a, a community species they are um, then they've been used to to study uh, language uh, with animals and how intricate their language is. in studies they found that they can differentiate between different species species approaching be it raptors or humans or dogs and they can even differentiate between colors of their clothing that they're wearing and there's a lot of really cool uh, uh, cutting-edge studies happening with prairie dogs and um, so just out of respect for the animals and and out of respect for, for, for Parker, you know, I have nothing but, uh, you know, I have no problem with development. I know I love this town and I don't mind other folks coming here to, uh, to love this town also. But if we can grow in a responsible way that um, shows respect for these animals, then uh, that's going to keep Parker, you know, the, the Parker that I imagine than the Parker that I, that I grew up in. So keep it this, this small town feel and this, this image of, of a western town whenever you think of, think of the Wild West. West, you know, it's these these animals are something that you imagine, and and we don't want it to just turn into some meaningless suburbia. I hope that we can keep our nature, and I appreciate you guys' consideration for this. So, thanks. Anyone else? At this time, I will close the uh, public comment. Um, John, do you want to respond to any of this? Chairman Howe, I, first of all, I do let, appreciate the uh, the participation and, and input of the of the residents, um, and, and certainly this ordinance. What I would say is a, a generalization. We looked at a number of ordinances that other municipalities in, in the state have, and in the Denver metro region, region, those are mostly on the north side of Denver. So we heard Broomfield, Boulder, Longmont, Thornton, and the like, and we looked at almost all of those. We came up with various concepts and alternatives, um, some more extensive than the ordinance in front of you, some less extensive. In discussion and consultation with council, I think council, again, because this is so new for the town and so new in the county at the municipal level, felt that this was an appropriate and reasonable starting point. I agree as the community development director. No doubt there are things in here, um, or there, there are substantive elements that are not in here that other communities uh, that were cited by the residents have. We may get there over time. Um, I'm excited to actually have a tool finally at the staff level, uh, assuming council approves it, that will lay out a policy and give us some tools to work with applicants in the community to address this issue. Um, and I think it's a sound starting point. Uh, it, it, it's not as extensive as other communities. Uh, we will have some issues in implementing it. Again, I think the Procedurally, I think the lack of time frames in the ordinance, uh, to Commissioner Rodell's point, uh, could be an issue and a challenge for us, but I'm, I'm confident we can work our way through that. And if it becomes a real problem, we'll be back to council for a discussion and possible direction from them to address that issue. 
Um, so that's what I would say here. Um, I do take some of the other comments, for example, about good faith. Um, I'm going to summarize these comments um, that I've heard tonight uh, and, and forward those on to the town council um, so that they can review the comments, the summary of comments that I'll prepare uh, for the public hearing on April 6th. I'm sure many of the residents here tonight will be there on April 6th for the public hearing and they can represent themselves and make the same or similar comments. No doubt some of the comments I think um, would provide additional standards and protections. Ultimately, it's up to the council. Um, they've given staff, myself included, direction to prepare this ordinance. They can hear out the public, and if they wish to modify the ordinance further, it's certainly their prerogative and within their ability to do so. And we will follow their direction with regard to that. But nonetheless, I think it's a good starting point. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I will close the public meeting at 8.02. Uh, Planning Commissioner discussion. I just want to say I want to thank everybody that came out today, the, the citizens of Parker, and I wish more <clears throat> more people would come out to our meetings as their public hearings, and I encourage everybody to come out and and listen and get get educated on what goes on. So I think the town staff's proposal goes a long way to taking the first step to create. Uh, a policy to improve the impact and humane management of prairie dogs. As with any proposal or document, there is uh, many drafts and rewrites, and to get to the final finished document over time and a learning experience at some point, an improvement can be made to this first proposal. So. I um, heard uh, two things tonight. Sorry, Ruth. No, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Kelly. Uh, one starting point which is, I think, a great way, great place to be. And the other one was that this is always able, you're always able to modify it. So at least you're starting somewhere. We, as a town of Parker, are starting somewhere. And it's, it's almost obscure to think you wouldn't be modifying it as we progress and as we grow, because we are a growing community, so. I think Commissioner Forrester put it pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, working with the Department of Agriculture, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and um, Colorado Parks and Wildlife, along with the EPA, to use non-toxic substances if the need to eliminate the prairie dogs arises. It's a great starting point. I think we are going to, you know, I think all of us in here have to understand that we are going to hit some hurdles, and we're all going to have to work um, to get, to get over those hurdles. So they're not just, you know, this isn't the be all end all. Um, I think it's a great starting point. And I think as the process moves forward, more determinations will come. There are some timing limitations, obviously due to other wildlife. And um, unfortunately, the reality is they cannot always be relocated. So if they do become part of the food chain, not by their choice, I appreciate the fact that Parker is really going to move towards that non-toxic um, option because other species do get um, other species are affected when we use toxic poisoning. So I think this is a great starting point. I commend the planning department and um, look forward to hearing from council. Uh, I concur with my fellow commissioners. Um, I'm very happy that we have made this first start. Um, I have concerns also about um, the timing issues that Commissioner Rodell brought up, but also um, the language of encouraged to versus required to make a good faith effort to. Uh, I think that would be stronger, better language um, if that's not what council can do right at this moment, I would encourage staff to closely monitor the uh, the good faith efforts that are shown so that they can recommend to council six months, a year down the road, that the language be modified in order to ensure that good faith effort. Um, but I, I am proud of Parker that we're the first ones in Douglas County to take this step and uh, once again, it shows the leadership that we have in our staff, our development staff, and, uh, and the work that we try to do as a town to live in uh, harmony with our environment. Thank you. 
Um, I, I agree. It's a great first start. Um, I'm anxious to see it just happen and then grow and expand. Um, I, I agree the, the language does need to be tightened up. Um, but um, kudos to us for uh, uh, the town of Parker of taking this first step. I agree with uh, my fellow commissioners. I, uh, too, like uh, Commissioner Forrester, would like to thank all of you from the community who've come and uh, supported this. Uh, I would also like to thank everyone in staff and, of course, town council for all the work they've put forward to having something uh, at least to give us a guideline that we've never had. And this is going to be a real uh, assistance for us. So I'm very much in favor of getting this type of a program and an ordinance on the books. So with that, I'm going to ask for a motion regarding this. I move the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve an ordinance to amend Title 13 of the Parker Municipal Code regarding prairie dog management. I second. It's been moved by Rich, second by Eliana, that we uh, ask town, or recommend the Town Council approve an ordinance to amend Title 13 of the Parker Municipal Code regarding prairie dog management. All those in favor, please signify. The motion passes unanimously. Uh, any planning commission items? Staff items? Uh, yes, Acting Chair, Commissioners. Um, when Council provided direction regarding the Prairie Dog Ordinance, they also requested that staff further explore a requirement for an environmental assessment. So expect uh, staff to be back before you in the future regarding this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Bryce. With that, at uh, 8.08, we adjourn. <laughs> Thank you.